What's up everyone, my name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon challenge video. Is there echo? Echo? I don't I don't know if there's echo or not. I should put furniture in my little recording studio. But anyways, we're back with another Pokemon challenge video. Today we're on Pokemon Radical Red and today's challenge will be from the comments. Today's challenge is can I beat Pokemon Radical Red using only bug type Pokemon? Now this was sent to me in the comments. I was like, I was very confused. Is bug type hard? Like apparently it's the hardest monotype to do. So we're going to attempt it today. You'll get my full opinions at the end of the video on how hard I think this challenge was. But before we get into the challenge itself, I want to ask you guys if you guys could leave a like and subscribe to my video. It will greatly help my channel and the series that we're running back on Radical Red. We'll, we'll do more ROM hacks. Apparently, there's a lot of comments every single video about me doing Pokemon Unbound, a new insane mode, quote unquote. And if you guys want me to do that, just let me know in the comments. I'll try it out. i try it out. I haven't played Unbound in like over a year or so. I'll come back to it, I promise. But the premise of this video today is we're gonna play through Radical Red using only bug type Pokemon. So they can have a secondary type, but they have to have a bug typing. And each of my Pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys, just like always in my challenge video. These are the nicknames I picked out. If you guys want me to nickname after my Pokemon in my future challenge videos, just drop it in the comments and hopefully I'll pick yours. And while you're down there, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Greatly help my channel. Quick intro, let's get into the challenge video itself. To start off with, there's no bug type starter. I don't think there's bug types. I don't think there's a single bug type starter in the entire Pokemon series. So what we have to do is once we get Pokeballs available to us, we can go into Viridian Forest and capture every single bug type Pokemon. So if you guys do know, Viridian Forest is foam of the biggest bug farm in the world. So we have to go out and catch as many bug types. We're not show everything, but you, you'll see which Pokemon I use. Uh, we're planning to use both Dustox and Beautify. Snom is a very good one uh, when it evolves, but uh, it's actually pretty good in the early games as well. Blip bug, blip, blip bug, blicky. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be useful too. It's a good defensive wall that we're gonna have on the team and you know Vigor Volt, pretty nasty We're we'll also gonna go out and get ourselves a hidden ability Snarl which can have ice scales not shield dust Ice scales reduces the effects of special attacking moves I believe so it's gonna be pretty tanky as a ice and bug type can be <laughs> That's pretty tanky train up a Pokemon as we face off against the first mini boss in the game Which is gonna be Faulkner Falcon is giving me the flying type mini boss of the game, and we're gonna start the battle against him using our Joltik. Obviously, he's gonna predict us going into an electric move against him. He's gonna go into Nomogo, which we can freeze it and then beat it down. This entire mini boss is very easy, surprisingly, because we have a bug type team. But we sack our Beedrill, which we'll release because we don't use Beedrill at all. I assume we're gonna use Beedrill. I was wrong, so I'm just gonna reuse the nickname for a different Pokemon later down the line. But I just never use Beedrill. This is the only time you see a Beedrill on my team. But my Jolteg will just finish things off against the Rufflet and the Corvus Squire. And it's super simple. You know, easy things out here. As we move on into the first gym fight in the game, we're going to face off against Brock. Brock is going to be the Rock type gym leader. And he's going to start with the battle against us using a Geodude. Now we're going to start with the battle against him using our own Electric type. Grubbin's going to mud slap into the Geodude, take his self destruct, but that's fine. We, we take care of the Geodude. Unfortunately, our Grumman will go down, so we switched into, why don't I have a Jotic? Where's my Jotic? This is a bad team. Why do I not have my Jotic? I sent out my, my my little Hexagon Square Bug Pokemon that I forgot the name of, and we're going to use Reflect right in front of the Arcan to take any move from the Arcan, and we're able to bubble down the Arcan using our Surskit, which will knock down both the Arcan and knock down the Onyx to low HP after sacking our Beautifly. Oh, we actually dodge a Rock Tomb, so we actually take care of the Onyx and the Vulpix. Actually, you know what? We take that. We take that, and we beat the first Gym Leader in the game very easily, as our Bug type is actually stronger than the Rock type chip. Now, from there, we're going to start evolving most of our Pokemon. Apparently, if you evolve a Ninkata into a Ninjas, you will not get a Shedinja, which uh, I didn't know that. I've been playing Radical Red for over a year now, and I did not know that. Also, where do you get Shedinja from? I guess the comments will answer that as we move on into Cerulean City, where we can clear through all this, get our levels up to 27, because that's giving the first soft cap level, and we can fight against the next gym leader in the game. We're face off against Misty next. Misty always brings me trouble, as you see, it's just so annoying. Everything I do, it seems like it was a wrong move, but once we figure it out, it's actually less annoying. It's actually pretty simple. As we start the battle against Mist using our Dustox. Now, Dustox is going to bait out a Toxic. It's just going to Toxic whatever it comes out. So it's going to switch out into a Starmie, which, I mean, we take that. This Starmie does not have Natural Cure, so it's going to stay in. I'm going to send out my Hexagon Bug that I don't know the name of. And we're going to Light Screen up 
unfortunately though it'll go down but that'll allow us to go into our beautify take easily take a side shock and knock him out using silver one so the ace pokemon is down i can switch out to my masquerade next to lower the attack of the frog deer and then he's gonna switch out into his lantern for sure so i'm just gonna bait out a toxic once again actually accidentally catch the frog deer i wanted to catch the lantern with that but it worked out now this frog deer is so scared of using rock team against my team for some reason i just gonna keep switching between the lantern and the frog deer as i go into my dust dogs once again i use dust dogs just to heal up against it i'm waiting for the attempt I'm wait i should have used toxic at one of those turns but i thought it's gonna keep attacking me so i knew it's gonna flip turn right out into the lantern just toxic stole both the frog deer and the lantern down dust dogs is so tanky it's actually insane so I'm able to toxic stall both the Lantern and Frogadier, and it's just as simple as that. Dustox unfortunately won't go down to uh, the Frogadier, but I'm able to switch out into my Masquerine, which will, well, I mean, we'll, we'll sacrifice the Masquerine for the Frogadier. We'll take that trade. For some reason, the Frogadier does not ever want to rock to me. And then I'll send on my Jotix to Thunder Wave the Volto. Luckily, I break through the confusion, and I'm able to dual wing beat him and knock him out. And we get the second gym batch in the game. Next up, we're going to face off against Brendan. He actually KO'd me a few times, but uh, luckily, we beat him in this attempt. And now we get the Lucky Eggs, and we can go through some dents in Dickless Cave, and also in Route 11 to get, hopefully, some nice berries. We're looking for more citrus berries, because we have a total of three. Three citrus berries on the team right now, and uh, we have a party of six. Anyways, from there, we're going to go into the next gym fight in the game. We're going to face off against Lieutenant Surge. And Lieutenant Surge is going to be the Luxus type gym leader in the game. We're going to start with the battle against Lieutenant Surge using our Galvantula. Galvantula is going to start with the battle with Sticky Webbing Up. And then he can switch out to his Vigo Vote. I feel like Orbital can handle this. So I switched out to my Orbital. Now Orbital takes a big bug bus. So I set up Light Screen to hopefully do something. I, I thought I had a good special defense. Apparently it doesn't. So I switched out to my Dust Dogs next to Toxic down in Vigo Volt. He's going to both switch into his Bolton. I switched out to my Flying type because I did teach it Dig. So it does a lot of damage using Dig. I sacrifice it. But that amount of damage is very crucial. As I'm able to signal beam down the Vigo Volt. And then it forces the Bolton to switch out. So I'm able to signal beam down the Vigo Volt with my Galvantula. And then just stay in. Because Sticky Web's up. It's going to be slower than me. I can knock him out using signal beam. And then knock out the Vigo Volt. He sends out his Manetric next. I can just stay in. Do some chip damage using Signal Beam and then switched out into my own Vigo Volt. In this situation, I got very lucky with the crit. But, I mean, sometimes you gotta take what you get. And we knock on the Mega Manectric. And his final two Pokemon will be the Pinchurchin. And his Raichu that really kills on my Dustox. Luckily, it starts setting up against my Butterfree. So I'm able to knock him out using Bug Buzz. But that could have been really bad. Next up, he's gonna switch out to his final Pokemon, which is gonna be the Pinchurchin. I'm gonna go into my Vigo Volt and roost off against him. You ever seen a Vigavo stall out any Pokemon? No. <laughs> but for once, it actually outspeeds something and knocks him out <laughs> using his HP. From there, we can go outside into Route 10 and head into this little den here. This den has Heracross. Now, you do know me. I love me some Heracross. So, we can go into this raid den. Where, like Heracross is actually a rare encounter in this den. And also, you can only find him in a Safari Zone. So, if we get a head start, we can use him for like this early part of the game still. And we beat the den, obviously. Unfortunately, we use a quick ball on him, and then he escapes, and then he runs away. And I'm like, that could have could have went better. That could have went any other way, honestly. But from there, we can go into the rock tunnel, and then clear through the rock tunnel. Um, nothing for us in here. We're not going to get the rock slide TM, because... Actually, no, we do get the rock slide TM, but it's for later. Uh, and then we're going to head into Celadon City, where we're going to face off against the fourth gym leader in the game. We're going to face off against Erica. Now, Erica is going to be the grass type gym leader, and this is actually very easy. So, I'm going to start the battle against her using my Galvangelo to sticky web up against her, force her out into the Sudorudo, and I'm like, you know what? Sack my Galvangelo. Signal Beam does a lot of damage here, which, thinking back, maybe I should have saved it. But it's going to head smash me, knock me out, and then I can switch out into my Ninjas, which will first impression accidentally onto the Meganium, and then Dual Wing Meat does not unfortunately knock him out, so he's going to knock me out with an Ancient Power. But my Butterfree will clean it up, knock out the Meganium for us, and then does not knock out the <laughs> Sudowoodo. So things are not looking too good for me as half my team's already dead, and we knocked out like one or two of her Pokemon at this point. So I switched out into my Frost Moth. Now Frost Moth is going to Bug Buzz, knock out the Sudowoodo. 
Force in the superior, which as we know, we have ice skill, so we could take any special attacking hits and we could hail up and then Aurora Veil and then Bug Buzz knock out the superior. Okay, looking good. We don't outspeed the Rillaboom because he has priority, but we're gonna Blizzard knock out the Rillaboom. And then our final Pokemon will be a Venusaur, which I Blizzard into. It crits him too, and then I avoid the sleep powder and I'm and I'm able to Blizzard once again and knock out the Venusaur and we take that. We beat Erica just with Frostmoth essentially. Frostmoth is so broken. Now, if you think Frostmoth is broken, we're going to get the actual broken OG Moth Pokemon. We're going to get Larvesta. Now, accidentally, we got the Swarm Ability one. We don't want the Swarm Ability one. That's a hidden ability. We actually want the Normal Ability for once. We want the Flame Body Ability, which will come in handy a lot, a lot of times. So, once we reset and we get Larvesta into, obviously, Flame Body, we're going to change the nature and then face off against Giovanni. Already putting in work. Look at this. Larvesta putting in work. And unfortunately, when we go into Lavender Tower, we're going to face off against the Marowak, which will give us a lot of problems. It's going to beat us down a lot of times. But luckily, we get it paralyzed and we knock it out. And then we can move on forwards into this little training grounds where we can face off against the Aldinos to get a bunch of XP. Uh, unfortunately, though, the level cap is like 56, so we're not able to evolve our Larvesta just yet. So we have to replace it with Ninjesto. And then Ninjas will actually clutch up against all of our rival's Pokemon. As we source this up, and the AI is just so stupid. It just this is 2.3b, and the AI is still dumb. As we just set up and go whenever we want. From there, we can face off against Archer and Ariana, and then clear through them very easily. And then we face off against Giovanni. Giovanni gives us such a hard time and so annoying that we go back into the Rock Tunnel and we catch ourselves a Dwebble in here. Dwebble is giving me a Rock and Bug type Pokemon. That most of you guys do know as you know the shell smasher and also the pokemon from pokemon unite so we can use that and just clear through giovanni very easily as you can see i got very lucky as uh, garchomp does not get a two speed boost and then we can face off against sabrina in her psychic type gym this double battle fight we're gonna start the battle against her using our crusto and our butterfree now butterfree is going to sleep power down in dd and then we're gonna rock Sight flinch down to hattering for sure and then in this turn, I'm going to Rock Record into the Hatterene and then Quiver Dance up using my Butterfree. And what an amazing start to the game as the Indeedy stays asleep. I'm able to Air Slash in the Conqueror and then unfortunately I'll go down to that. I'm able to uh, switch out into my Ninjas to knock out the Conqueror and also X Scissor into the Indeedy to knock him out. Her next two Pokemon will be a Porygon 2 and a Crawdont. I'm able to X Scissor into the Crawdont and Rock Side to knock it out. Unfortunately, I flinched the Porygon 2, so, which does not let it set up with a Trick Room. So I'm going to go down to Expanding Force by the Gardevoir. I mean, both my mobs are very specially defensive, so we're able to Bug Buzz down the Gardevoir and knock it out. And then it's just everything. Oh, it's the world against Porygon 2, so it's not going to win that fight. And we beat Sabrina with little trouble at all. Next up, we're going to go into the Safari Zone. Um, as you can see, Crusto destroys Brendan very easily. And then we go into the Safari Zone. We can go out and catch ourselves a Scyther in the wild. And we have to change the daytime <laughs> into daytime because Scyther only is found in the daytime. So we're able to catch ourselves a Scyther, evolve that into a Scizor, and then go out and get some hard scales. This hard scale things, I do every single run. It does not work out. I, I actually never use the egg moves most of the time. I teach my Frostmoth Miracle. That will be used one time. One time. It actually came in handy, but you know I used it one time the entire run. But from there, we can go into the fight against Koga for the 6th gym badge of the game. We're going to start the battle against Koga using our Crustle. And we're going to Rock Slide down the Swallow to knock him out. But unfortunately, he's going to switch up to his Greninja. And we're going to let him get the Ash Greninja for him. Which you might be thinking, what? Why would you do that? But it actually works for me. As I switch up to my Frost Moth, I take any of his hits and then Quiver Dance up in front of him. I Quiver Dance 3 times. And then I'm able to Bug Buzz knock out the Greninja. If Selgor does not have a Focus Dash, I'm able to Ice Beam knock him out. And Ice Beam knock out the Drapion, Ice Beam knock out the Dragapult, and Ice Beam knock out the Toxic Tree. And we're able to knock out Koga very easily. Just super, just free setup bait from the Greninja. I'm right, going to come back and show him a Ninja so we get a Life Orb from him, which will be useful down the road. And then we can move on and show Chuck a Terrakion to get the Focus Dash from him as well. And then beat down Price. Price is a very easy battle, especially with a Mega Scizor. We're going to get a choice card from him, and, and then we're going to face off against Jasmine, which is a, kind of a waste of time because we don't have any physical attackers that really need a choice ban because Scizor has a Mega Stone, so kind of useless. And now we can face off against Blaine. Blaine's going to be the 7th gym leader in the game, and he's going to be the Fire-type gym leader. 
We're gonna start a battle against him using our Butterfree against his Torkoal. We're gonna put it to sleep. That's that's all we can do. And then air slash him down. He stays asleep for all three turns. And then he switches up to his type lotion, which breaks his blazing soul blaze or something like that that makes his fire moves priority if he has full hp it caused him to just lose and that's the only reason he really lost this fight is because he switched out to the type lotion when it's unnecessary from there i'm just getting bodos into the type lotion to get him low on hp he's gonna knock me out it's completely fine i switch out into my galvangela to thunderbolt into the cinderace it paralyzes him and then i'm able to switch out into my volcarona which will quiver dance twice and then psychic him as he tries to sucker punch me does not work I'm able to knock out his Charizard in two shots, as his Flamethrower does no damage, and I'm able to knock out everything. Everything dies. Torko goes down, and then his final Pokemon will be a Sunflora, which will go also down. I mean, it's super simple. We knock out Blaine, really losing anything. I mean, it was just wait I was just waiting for setup bait. Oh no, his final Pokemon will be a Venusaur, which also goes down. <laughs> so we end up beating Blaine without any troubles at all, and now we can move into Cerulean Cave which will be the fight against Ariana and Archer, and obviously Volcarona destroys Archer, as you can see. He just sets up right in front of Durant, and then he burns the Durant with Flame Body when he gets attacked, and it's just super simple. It would just destroy his entire team. Uh, it's not really our fault that he's trash. And then against Ariana, this, uh, the luckiest thing happened to me. Uh, <laughs> all my Pokemon went down, unfortunately. Uh, the Hunchcrow ends up knocking my Volcarona, and then I put it to sleep using my Butterfree. I'm able to Air Slash down the Mawile, for some reason, it didn't want to sucker punch after it mega evolved, and then it was it was over. I air slash everything and beat him down. <laughs> so dumb. And from there, we can move on into the fight against Giovanni. Giovanni's fight is very simple. I mean, Lance is just carrying me with his Dialga, and then we end up beating down his Tyranitar. I mean, he beats down his Tyranitar, and we're done with that. Next up, we're going to face off against the 8th gym leader in the game. We're going to face off against Claire. And we have started the battle against her using our Scizor. If we have Sword Stance as a move, it's going to always go into Taunt. So I'm going to Bullet Punch into his face. Force him to Taunt and then knock him out <laughs> with a Bullet Punch. This in turn will force out into his Naga Nadel. Which I'm like, you know what? Let him have it. I'm just going to Bullet Punch, do some chip damage, switch into my Frost Moth. Which will Ice Beam and then... And then since I'm at low HP, it's going to force him into his Magnanera, which will Flare Cannon into me, and I'm able to switch out into my Volcarona, which will Quiver Dance two times against the Dragonite, and then hopefully just Flamethrower it down. I don't get a burn, but it just lets me keep Flamethrowing it down and then knock him out. So we'll take the <laughs> we'll take all that, and we can sweep down the rest of Claire's team very easily, as you can see. So um, I, I guess Claire is trash. <laughs> we beat the Ape Gemini just like that. And then we can move on face off against our rival in Route 22. And then, I mean, again, Volcarona is just very broken. We knock down <laughs> our rival with Volcarona once again because it just gives me free setup. Bug types are very strong. They have infinite, like, setup abilities. They have Shell Smash. They have Quiver Dance. They have everything like that. Even my Scizor, his Swords Dance. Like, everything has a setup move and it could just destroy everything. They're not really good defensive-wise, which is why I have... Across the was sturdy because to take a hit regardless of whatever happens. Brandon's gonna face the wrath of our Volcarona. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can stop me when I have this Volcarona set up. Unless I need the HM for strength, then something can stop me. <laughs> now we're gonna go back into Victor Road and then clear through it. It's pretty difficult, but luckily we have a Volcarona which sweeps everything and our scissor can pick up the slack. From there we can move on into the Elite Four and the Pokemon League itself. We're gonna do one more review of our team. We have a pretty solid team that um, we're always going to focus Ash on our Butterfree, Mega Evolve into our Scizor, and everyone has like a mixture of items and stuff. So it's going to look pretty nice. Uh, I don't think we switch up moves until the very end where we teach Volcarona Psychic. So if you see all the movesets, these are the movesets for the entire game. And now we're going to face off against the Elite Four. We're going to face off against Lorelei. We first attempted to face off against her water team. It does not work. I... I think something went wrong in my head. I was like, let's face up against the water team because it's so much easier. And then I just got lost. I even gave my <laughs> Frost Moth the choice specs. I'm like, oh no. Maybe, you know what? Let's just restart this. Let's restart this. Let's face off against her ice team because it's so much easier. We have a Mega Scizor. Mega Scizor can knock out most of her team. So we're going to start off with Mega Scizor, Blood Punch into the Ninetales to knock it out. And then we're going to do some chip damage against the Glaceon with Rock Slide. 
and then in the following turn we're gonna bullet punch into the glacier to knock it out the zoom arrows can go from a crustal because it's at low hp and then i can switch out into my Volker runner to flamethrower into the cow rex and bullet punch into it to knock him out the zoom arrow is gonna knock out my Volker runner but get hit with a flame body i'm telling you flame body is the goat it's the savior of, of this challenge of all this entire run it was saved by the flame body so many times and I'm able to bullet punch once again into the Zumaro. And I'm able to knock out the Brodom. Well, not knock him out. But, you know, do a lot of damage to him. Which, you know, the Bomb Stone cannot stop me at this point. It can try to Blizzard me. It, it gets almost one shot at by my Scizor. And the final Pokemon on the team is the Bomb of Snow. And just can knock him out using Discharge. And we beat Lorelei. And now we could move into the fight against Bruno. This fight actually is the most difficult in the entire Elite Four, in my opinion. Blacked out multiple times against Bruno, which is unfortunate. But we're gonna restart. We're gonna face off against Bruno. We're gonna start a battle against him using using our Galvantula. Galvantula is getting discharged into the Infernape to knock him out. And then there's Shifu comes out next. I want to get Sticky Web up, but it's getting Wicked Blow me and knock me out. Fine, we take that. Whatever. Uh, most of our team is faster than his team, anyways. I'm gonna go into my Butterfree. I should have Sleep Powder it, but it's gonna Wicked Blow me and knock me out. So that's bad move on bad moves i'm gonna bullet punch it with my mega scissor to knock out their shifu he's gonna force into the lucario which i am going to be a little scared of but i'm able to iron head into him unfortunately my scissor goes down to a close combat which will force me into my crusto which will actually bulldoze and knock out the lucario so it actually works out in my favor i misclicked here and i went for rock slide and then that was that was, that was a bad move by me so I go into my Frost Moth next, which will Ice Beam into the Zacian. And at this point, I'm just throwing. But I go into my Volcarona. Zacian can one-shot me, so it's going to Source Dance up. I'm going to Quiver Dance up and then Flamethrower as he switches into the Como. And then he just throws because his Como dies. And then his Conqueror cannot do enough damage to me. Conqueror will go down and then his Zacian will go down. He just decided to throw the game and we beat Bruno. Next fight, we're going to face off against Agatha, and it's super simple, super easy, and it's just straight to the point. We're going to start a battle against her Zoroark using our Bulk Runner just to knock it out. And then a Bug Buzz once again to the Sail Valley. I was like, I wonder if it kills. It does not kill. It's going to kill me. So, <laughs> I mean, that's a bad trade, but Volk goes down for once in his entire life. It never goes down. I, um, I just never goes down, apparently. I'm going to switch out to my Galvantula to discharge into the Aegis Slash and then get a free Sticky Web up. Not able to knock him out, but I'm able to switch out into uh, my scissor next to Swords Dance right in front of it. Get two Swords Dance up against it. I should have got three. I'm able to bullet punch, knock out the Sil Valley, the Aegis Slash, and the Spectre. Do a lot of damage to the Marsh Shadow. It's gonna knock me out. Barely. And then I switch out to my Frost Moth to clean up the battle. Just Ice Beam into the Marsh Shadow. Do some damage against the Gengar. But since I have a sturdy mod in the back, the Gengar is useless. Crusta will. Bodos knock him out and we beat Agatha on our first attempt. Super simple. We're gonna go to the next Elite Four battle. We're gonna face off against Lance. And no, we're not gonna face off against his Garchomp team. No, 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 not his Garchomp team this time. We're gonna face off against his Aerodactyl team. His Aerodactyl is gonna try to taunt my Galvangela, which will force me into discharge. Discharge, paralyze, knock out the Aerodactyl very easily. He's gonna switch out to his Dioga next. I don't wanna sack my Galvangela. I decided to sack my Butterfree. I mean it doesn't do too much in my entire team, but, you know, it's a good sack. Try to get a Sleep Powder off. Does not work. I switched into my Frost Moth, and there we go. The Heart Scale Miracle knocks out the Dialga. <laughs> and then the Mel Metal comes out. It's going to knock out my Frost Moth. Completely fine. I switched into my Volk Runo, which will get a Quirv Dance off against him. And then Flamethrower as he switches into his Dragonite for some reason. And then I'm like, wait, should I save this? Uh, I guess I could save it. He's going to stream speed me. I get a sticky web up against him as I'm able to switch out into my scissor, which will get a sword sense off against the Mel Metal coming in, which I'm able to get another one. And that allows me to iron head. He does not get flinch, which is kind of annoying. He should have got flinch, but I'm able to knock out the Mel Metal. I'm able to outspeed the Dragovish with the sticky web and the X scissor to knock him out, and then BP into the Dragonite to knock him out, and then do a lot of damage against the Salamence. And then our Crusto, our trusty Crusto, will rock slide into the Salamence to knock him out, and we beat Lance. So simple out here. Now, the final battle in the game will be the champion fight against Gary, and it's so anticlimactic. <laughs> so, we're going to start the battle against him using our scissor to bullet punch down the Feromosa. And then at that point, it's basically over because I bait in the Metagross, and I'm going to let my scissor go down. As I switch into my Volcarona, take a Zen Headbutt, 
and then force him to ball punch me continuously as I quiver dance up. He's gonna burn himself with the flame body, and I say flame body was gonna be the savior of this run. I'm just it's just easy. It's just so easy out here. I roost up all the damage and then eventually flamethrower down the Metagross to knock him out. He sends out his Groudon, but it's too late. Psychic would knock him out in one shot. And then Zyvelto can outspeed me. Flamethrower would knock him out. Psychic into the Eternatus to knock him out. And then Flamethrower into the Darmanitan to finish the battle against our rival and be the champion of Pokemon Radical Red once again. Obviously, not the hardest fight in the world. Anyone could do that. Um, bug type, model type. Not the hardest, actually. The hardest I've the hardest challenge I ever had in regular Radical Red, not hardcore Radical Red, was definitely using Steven Stone's team. I remember that so fondly. That was so hard to do, and it was so annoying because his team was trash for some reason. I don't know. His team was so annoying to use. I just didn't like his team. Maybe I'll do another run with it, but it was so garbage to use. It was just difficult. It was not fun at all. And surprisingly, surprisingly, this run with bug types is actually very easy. Like, I didn't, I had troubles with Misty probably, like, the most out of all the gym leaders. I can't really think of any other gym leaders I had too much trouble with. And then with Bruno, Misty and Bruno, which are weird, which are weird teams to fight against. But honestly, that was pretty fun. If you guys want me to do some other monotypes in Pokemon Radical Red, let me know in the comments. And so sorry for talking so fast in this commentary. Uh, but anyways, if you guys all enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like. Comment down below some challenge ideas just like this one. And subscribe if you guys are not already. It will greatly help my channel. My name is Ben Alpha. Hope you guys all had a great day. I'm out. Peace.